welcome. Uh, a few things. Who, who here was at my talk earlier on today? Who, who was at my talk earlier on today? Okay. Who wasn't at my talk earlier on today? How about that? Okay. Yeah, he wasn't. Okay, cool. I will repeat for you, for you through a few things pretty fast. Um, so, uh, to kind of what we're going to cover today is uh, two things really. So, we're going to cover two examples we're going to work through with TensorFlow.js. One of them, I'm going to use that mobile net model, which I kind of talked, talked about today in the, in the talk. And the other one, we're going to do uh, regression. So, we're an example of something called linear and polynomial regression. Um, and that's all I think we've really got time for today, because we've only got three hours. We've only got a little bit of time today. This normally, if you want to do a full one, this, this, this is like an eight hour plus workshop. So, we've only got time for two. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, if I can have you all join, I haven't actually checked these links, I just created them. Do they work? They don't work. Oh, that was a, it's, a, it's all an elaborate hoax to get you to buy more Microsoft stuff. I don't know, why is that not working? So I made a, a Slack, a Slack, so you could, uh, is that really not working? Damn, how is that not working? Let me go here. Wow. Uh, do I have to click something? Uh, what did I call it? TFJS, T oh, I know why. Let me check that. Boom. So, uh, Hopefully it will work. Someone, someone try it out. It should be tfjsws slash slack. And that's where I'm going to post kind of bits of code and links and things like that to make it easier for you um, as you go through. Uh, there should be a room called jsconfasia hyphen tfjs. Check out. This is actually the, my, uh, that's actually my, my, the, the slack for our meetup group in, in London. So I recommend after the workshop, unless you're from London, leave the Slack because we channel and out stuff all the time. Um, new, new. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, meetups. Meetups. Yeah. So um, I arrived last night, and I, I didn't manage to get to sleep all night. So I'm not too sure what's going to happen today. We'll see. Um, and then the other thing. Oh, same here. Should be TFJS WS slash mobile net. So basically, don't clone that. Visit that URL and that will take you to the GitHub and clone that GitHub to, uh, to begin with. I'll give, you, I'll give you a few minutes for that. Yeah? Did, it, did people manage to log on to the Slack? I have not checked the link at all. Has anyone successfully logged into Slack? Yes. Yeah? Okay, excellent. I can't check it because uh, I'm not on the thingy. And... Um, going to try a new second screen. We'll see, see how that works. A whistle. It's probably not a good sign. Sorry. GitHub. Yeah, it should be TFJS WS. Yeah, WS. Ah, oh, sorry. One second. 
Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? This way. And one other thing, duet. Just let me just two seconds while I set this up. God, it worked for the first time ever. It actually worked first time, yes. So I am like this. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Can't believe this is working. Boom, boom. Just arrived. Quick, quick, quickly take us a, a snapshot of that screen because it's going to go in a second. I'm okay, actually. Yeah, okay. I got it all sorted. Actually, I should. Why am I facing this way? It's the wrong way to face. I'm going to face the other way. Yeah, sorry, a sec I'll just fix it. I keep on saying it, I'll just fix it. Hang on, oops. Uh, the second one is uh, WS, both of them are WS. Yeah, both of them are WS, TFJS, WS, yeah. That was my mistake. Just gonna resituate re myself. Things are going to get a little bit iffy. I'll come out this way. This is the way I'm going to come out. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Facing out is probably the best way. It's okay, it's okay. I'll turn it around. Turn it around. Boom. 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 Oh man. This is just spectacular what I'm doing here, isn't it? I'm going to unplug and plug into this. behind me that thing okay now you have to wait again uh, oh damn it where's it going yes okay where was I All right, here we go. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. All right, so, hopefully everybody's got that. Um, if you weren't at my talk this morning, uh, I'm just gonna very, very quickly go through some of the things I went through again this morning. If you were at my, if you were at my talk this morning, consider it revision. Uh, so I run a, a co run a meetup group called AI Jobs London. This is where you can find out information about me, especially my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to do that. Follow me on Twitter. Oh, if you want to take a pictures, let's do a picture. After later. Um, the agenda today, so this is all what we're going to cover, is uh, I'm going to go over a really brief overview of neural networks and TensorFlow.js. If you're at my, my talk this morning, then that's going to be old news. Then we're going to go through mobile net. The thing again I showed you this morning, we're going to very, very quickly go over it to, to start dipping your toe into some, some of this stuff. And then, and I'm really sorry about this, there's just no way around it. This is like, this, this is the gentlest I can do it. 
This is the gentlest I can do it, but it's going to be a steep ramp up from mobile net to regression. But this is the simplest use case that there is. So I apologize. No, don't apologize. You, 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 this is just your life if you want to do machine learning, right? It's just your life. Um, but then we're going to go through kind of what's called regression, linear regression, and polynomial, polynomial regression. Hopefully, quite a lot of this, you're going to be sitting there on your computers, tapping away, working, trying stuff out yourself. Um, and I'm here if you've got any questions. Um, I'll try and help out as much, much as I can. Turn to the person next to you. To your right. Turn to the person to your right. To your right. Say hi. Welcome. That doesn't make any sense, does it? It doesn't work at all. Uh, say hello and introduce yourself to the person to your left and to your right. Right? Okay. Say, say it. hi, Asu. Hi. Uh, Christine, nice to meet you. Yeah. 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 Good. Uh, help each other out. There's a lot of people in this room, and it's going to be very difficult for me to kind of cover off and ask and uh, answer questions from everybody. Um, if you solve something, the person next to you is struggling. You know, help them out. Um, help type on Slack. You know, if you see see somebody asking questions, you know, type on Slack. Help each other out as much as possible, because um, it's nice to do that. Um, so, introduction. So, what we're going to be doing um, is very different, different types of machine learning. We're going to be doing, well, yeah, supervised machine learning today. But so, essentially, what you do is you get some training data in this type of model. You get some training data, and that usually is something that a human being has labeled in some way. Um, as in, a human being has looked at that and said, oh, I think this is this, or I think this is this. Okay, and you take training data and you kind of define that al algorithm, and then you train it, and that what what it generates is a model. There's lots of different types of classifiers, um, many many different types of them. What we're going to do today is, is using uh, a neural network method. Um, and it outputs a model, right? And let's say this is a, a model which um, you trained it up using sentiment analysis with some words. So it knew if a sentence is a, a positive sentence or a negative sentence. And then when you give it something it's never seen before, like I love Asim, it can say that's positive. So that's kind of what, what this stuff is really good for, is you train it up on one set of data. Then you can give it something it's never seen before, and it can come to a conclusion as to what that is. That's kind of opposite to what we normally do if we're programming, you have to kind of always think of every single edge case and it'll only ever give you an answer based off of what you program. That's kind of the underlying fundamental power of machine learning is it can, it can kind of infer and give you answers to stuff that you've never even, it's never even seen before. So we're using TensorFlow. Um, it is currently, I still think, the most popular uh, open source package for machine learning. Um, this is an old slide, but uh, the, the, at the time, the next big, biggest thing was Scikit-Learn, which is 30,000, but TensorFlow was 100,000. It's probably been surpassed that a lot. Uh, as I said this morning, we're using TensorFlow.js. Um, TensorFlow.js comes with two different APIs inside it, two different kind of, yeah, APIs. Uh, use, use something called a core API which if you're using TensorFlow, um, like Python and, and, and other versions of it, that's what you'd see is a core API. Um, it's very low level. You, if, if you looked at something like that, you'd have to really squint to see the neural network. It's kind of like looking at a program and trying to figure out exactly what it's done. It's like the, the building parts um, of a program. So if you're really just doing neural networks all the time, there's lots of abstractions that you can use, and, and for that, there's, uh, there's something called Keras. So if you're doing it in Python, you use Keras, which gives you a, a high-level abstraction. If all you're doing is a neural network, but what TensorFlow, J, that, that, and normally that's a separate 
separate, separate package. But in TensorFlow.js, they've combined it. So there's actually two APIs in one, the core API and the layers API. However, today, you're not looking at the layers API because we don't have time for that. You're going only for the core API, but it's good to know, right? Yeah. I, what I'm going to show you in the core API is going to be like this many lines of code, and if you use a layers API, it would be like two lines of code or something. But I think it's good to understand how things work underneath, because otherwise you don't know. You're just using some line of code. Uh, neural networks. Pretty boring for the rest of you, because this is exactly the same slides as I did today. But anyway, um, based, on a base, uh, based on biology, so it's a neuron. You have dendrites going in, a body and axons going out. Um, if enough electricity flows in the dendrites, the body goes, ah, and pushes some electricity out of the axons. That's what we do here, but we're doing exactly the same thing just in code. You have a node. The electricity going in is your data one sample of your data that you're pushing in. So whatever that is, I'm going to go through it, but whatever that is. Then you have these edges, and for each of those dendrites going in, you have to know how important that piece of input is to the, to the end result. And to that, we have something called a weight. Initially, this is randomized to a random number. You just push them through an activation function, and you output one. Uh, whatever the output, activation function outputs, you then pipe that into the next one, to the next one, to the next one. There's loads of different activation functions, <coughs> which this is one of them, very simple. Anything below zero is zero, anything above zero is one. As I'm speaking to you, I realize that throughout what you're gonna to cover today, we're not gonna to touch on an activation function, but it's good to know, because we're not gonna use, because normally when we're using a layers API, we start touching on the activation functions and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, it's good to know. So this is one of them. It, it, it's good because it's, it's really easy to calculate. And um, anything with machine learning, you want stuff that's easy to calculate. So it doesn't require too much processing power and compute. But it's really bad because tiny changes and tiny changes in the input is a huge change in the output. So there's other ones that people use. This is a hyperbolic tan. It kind of gives you. A little bit more, you know, uh, non-linearity. Um, but this is a really common one which people use called ReLU. And if you actually covered off more of the rest, if we, I can point you out to the, there's, there's two further examples you can do if you go home, uh, when you go home, if you go home, when you go home. Um, and they'll, they'll show you examples and they'll, they'll be using ReLU, but this is a, it's a good one. Um, it's kind of a, it's a nice compromise because it's kind of easy to calculate and does give you some non-linearity, so it's kind of nice. Um, you kind of pump it all together. You, get, you create loads of those. You join them together. You're not going to do that today. It's too complicated. You're going to do one neuron. And you'd be like, oh my god, one neuron's so hard. You're doing one neuron today. Uh, but if you did, you wanted to, you can connect a whole bunch of them together um, like this. And if, if you use the core API, you would literally be creating a neuron, a neuron, a neuron, a neuron. If you're doing the layers API, you just say a layer with three, a layer with two, a layer with three, and it kind of figures the rest out for you. But um, that's what you're basically doing. Then, then you feed in some input data, whatever that is, whatever you're trying to train on, depends on what that is. It just multiplies everything out and gives you a number. So I, I, I can't remember what, what did I say? This is, this is my example with the, the faces today. Um, but uh, what did I say? This why have I not got the the faces in this in this slide? I don't know. But anyway, this was supposed to be an example of facial features. Uh, you pump it in, it gives that a number. Let's say we know this input data should have been eight instead of instead of three. We know it's wrong by five. Of course, it's going to be wrong because we would have initialized the random things randomly. And then what you do is you do this thing called uh, backpropagation or, or tuning, or essentially optimization. Right? You're trying to change these numbers so the next time you pass this thing, all this data through, it's going to give you a 8. And that's what the training, when we talk about training a neural network, when we're training this stuff, that's what we're doing. We're just tuning these numbers 
using a loop and TensorFlow so that the next time it goes through, it's just going to give us an 8. And we'll tune those numbers to some value. Right? That's kind of TensorFlow.js. That's TensorFlow. Um, that's kind of really high level overview of a, of a neural network. Um, and uh, yeah, that's right. So let's go through, but what we're going to do for the very, very first example, so, what, so once, you, once you've trained up one of those networks, you can actually then save them. I'll show you. Aha. Wait, what can you see right now? No, nothing. You, I want to mirror this screen. That's what I want to do. So I want to do, that's what I want to do. Yeah? Yes, this is what I want to do. Okay. So if you go to, here we go. If you just visit, if you go here, the TensorFlow J TensorFlow org. Oh, it's changed. TensorFlow.org slash JS slash models. Um, this is where you can find a, a whole bunch of the kind of the pre pre made models that are available. That, that is growing. It's growing. So the one we're going to use is, is, is MobileNet. But you, see, you can see there's a bunch of others. Toxicity is a new one. So toxicity. I wonder if you've got a demo of it. Well, then I'm a demo. Well, essentially what toxicity does is it, it doesn't just tell you if a piece of text is bad or good. It tells you if it's offensive and, and in what way is it offensive. So it tells you, we're dudes on computers, moron. You are quite astonishingly stupid. It's not an identity attack. It is an insult. It's not obscene. Um, so you can see you can have like stuff that is an, an, an identity attack onto what somebody is. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting use case. This one. This is, this, I think this is the latest one they've got. It's growing. You can try finding some yourself. These are the ones that are kind of very well, nicely packaged, um, and it's just a really great way if you just really want to get started. I know we JavaScript developers here, so we we kind of just like npm installing stuff and then just getting on with it. Um, so it's a good way of, 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 of playing around with it. Another really fun one, the two really fun ones here actually, PoseNet is a very fun one. I wonder if I can start the demo myself. Try the demo here, here we go. In fact, do you know what? I'm, I'm gonna be rude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get somebody to like volunteer. Here we go. I need a volunteer. Probably, probably you, sir. Go and stand up. Yeah, go and stand up. So you can see and move about. That's pretty cool, right? So you can do it. Yeah, yeah. For ages, I've, 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 I've just haven't had the time. I've wanted to make like um, a flossing game. See if you can count do the, the flossings. Because you can actually do multiple people. So I've often thought you could have two people have making a flossing game. Make it. One of you make it, right? And uh, another really fun one that, I, that I've only really started to play with uh, is um, speech. So you can actually, you can actually recognize speech. I wonder if it has an online demo. I don't know if it's got an online demo. It does have an online demo. I can't remember where it is. But essentially, they've, they've got a model here which, is, which, which has been trained up to recognize the numbers zero to nine, up, down, stop, yes, no, and it can just recognize those words uh, just using the browser and the web audio API. So that's pretty cool. Um, sorry? It's at the bottom. Ah, there we go. Uh, oh, it's going to download it, isn't it? Anyway, that's how it works. We're, we're going to use the, oh, it is, here we go. Uh, down. Eight. Yes. Ah, oh, whatever. Um, there you go. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to be using the mobile net one today to, to play around with. So, where's my, 
slides from MobileNet. I think this is it actually. Hang on. No, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it's worked. So, um, hopefully you should all get cloned this thing by now onto your computers. Um, so, we'll learn how to load and use a pre trained model. And, oh, where to find pre trained models? Gone the wrong way around. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. And, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, underneath a lot of this stuff, we're just going to do tf.load model, which is going to load those models uh, underneath. And, uh, yeah, and this is MobileNet. We're not going to use it in this way, we're going to use it in a slightly different way. But, because we're not going to use import statements, we're going to use these script tags. As all websites should be made. Script tags. Alright, give me two seconds while I get set up. Because I just need to get my head straight. Hang on. So let me get my, this is not it. Uh, new window. Yeah, I'm on that. Excellent. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah! Why? Why do I have C plus plus extensions? Okay, so I think uh, I'm going to revert this. Okay. Um, if you want, and I know it's going to be pretty simple for, for, a lot of, for a lot of you, but trust me, you're going to remember this moment later on, and you're going to be like, I wish we were doing mobile, mobile net again, because it's going to get... It's going to get steep, get steep pretty fast, dipping your toes in. So you should see, can you see this? No, probably not. Uh, oh, damn it. That's what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to do this. So what, this is what I'm going to do. I want to load up the completed one. So if you're in the folders, you see main.completed main and main.js. Maybe some of you have already cheated. And you've looked at the completed code. Yeah? Well, this is basically what you'll end up doing, or should, should, end, should end up looking like. Ah! Ah, five icon. Oh, wow! That's awesome! That's brilliant. How's that? <laughs> this is great. Can someone take a video of this? <laughs> cool. Um, but let me just refresh that because the, 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 the canvas went all wrong there. I know, why is that not? Oh, I know. <laughs> so I, I think because I'm, I'm screen sharing, the canvas is a bit wrong. But anyway, so um, this is gonna, not, not going to work because my, my screen's it's, it's not going to. Anyway, whatever. So the bottom of the screen is detecting what's in the image. This is crazy. What if, like, oh, barbershop <laughs> monitor? No, it's not it's gonna phone, maybe a phone. Wait. Modem. I don't think because the computers because the things behind it. iPod, iPod at the bottom. iPod. It's close enough. Close enough. So that's what it, basically what, what it's what it's doing. This is what I was, I was demoing earlier on today. Um, and this is how we're gonna this is, this is what we what we're, what we're all gonna build today. So all, all that we've done here is two is two things. Oops, this is 
Mm. This is an old version. <laughs> I haven't updated it. I'm not going to update it. Don't update it. Keep it as it is. So um, uh, what I'm doing is I'm loading up TensorFlow.js at the top. It's 1.0 1 now. I haven't updated this in a while. So, uh, but it's the same. For this demo, it'll be exactly the same. And the other thing I'm doing is, is loading up mobile net at the top there as well. So you could, if you're doing this properly, so, so derisive, aren't I? Properly do like import statements and a bundler or something like that. But I'm just doing a script tag. And I've got my, my code is going to be main.js. TensorFlow.js is its thing. Let's have a take a look at what mobile net looks like uh -huh. on the internet. Uh, and, oh, no, it's here. I already opened it, didn't I? Did I open it? No, I didn't. Here, here. So all that mobile net is when you're, when you're downloading is it's just, it's just, if I go into source here, uh, index. All that mobile net's doing is if you look really closely at the source code, uh, where is it going? Oh, it had to be doing it a different way, didn't it? Ah, oh, okay, there's another way of loading it. You use load graph model. So all this doing underneath, this is, this is just a nice wrapper around TensorFlow um, just to help you for, for mobile net. But all it's doing underneath is using load graph model and passing in a JSON file, which is kind of depending on the version number, it's whatever this is. Uh, dot JSON or something along those lines. So when I'm loading in this mobile net thing, all it's doing is just doing some nice bits of code so you don't have to do all this stuff yourself, but it's just loading up a JSON file with tf.loadgraph model. And the other kind of really interesting file, and, and also what it's doing is when you ask classify, classify, because um, that's, that's the code that you're going to use. You're going to pass it something, usually like an image. You can pass it canvas, a video, or image data, or just like some raw numbers. And then what it does is it calls um, infer. Right, when you load up a model, you, you give it some, once you've trained it, you call infer, you give it some new data, and it gives you the response back. But all, it's just giving you really raw numbers, like really, really raw numbers. It's not really giving you something that you, that you need to understand what, what's actually going on. And so it just has some nice helper classes, helper functions to kind of turn those raw numbers into something meaningful, i.e. a string that describes what's in the image. And so it's called this thing called top K classes, which, um, anyway, which, which, which basically loads up this file. And this is the interesting file here, ImageNet classes. Um, because at the end of the day, all the models we're turning to is a number. What does that number mean? Well, this is going to tell you what that number means. So this, these are all the thousand things that MobileNet can understand. This is it. Toilet tissue, toilet paper, a bullet. We all know what a bullet is. I have, I've got several bullets. I think an, an ag agaric. I don't know what this is. <laughs> a gyrometra? Stinkhorn. Anyway. A scuba diver. Wow. Um, that's, that's all that MobileNet can really detect. And these are the things that MobileNet knows how to detect, right? Which is why it's not so good. But it's small enough so it can actually be usable on a mobile, right? So that's basically what it's doing. Let me just get up uh, Visual Studio Code Insiders. In fact, I don't even need to do that here. I can just do this. Oh no, closure. Yeah, I'm just going to do this way. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, oh yeah, the icon's changed. Cool. Yeah. Does that happen a while ago? It was a few days ago. Man, I've been on a plane forever. I don't know this stuff anymore. All right, so uh, you, should, you, should, you should see something like this in your main, main file. First thing you should do is like, obviously there's hints there. To do one, what do we need to do? We need to load the mobile net to start the camera. So all you need to do is, do, is load the model, yeah? Mobile net is already in your namespace because you loaded up with a script tag. We didn't do anything. Uh... Oh, you're gonna... it's going to be very difficult for you, isn't it? Oh, no. Uh... Maybe we can turn that screen that way and you all... Can you all see this screen from that side? Yeah, so maybe we can turn that one for the people behind there. Try, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Oh, opportunity for that self, that picture. <laughs> no, that's the wrong way around. Uh, everybody wave. Yeah. And this side. This side. Look. Wait. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Oh, we've got some professional mm -hmm. ones as well. Don't worry. I got it. <laughs> go. It's cool. Cool. Um, uh, I'm back here. You good? You're good? Excellent. Um, and what that's doing underneath, as I showed you before, this is just going and it's caught, that, that, that mobile net is just getting the, finding the right JSON for whatever version number we, we're, we're running. And then it's just calling the load graph model underneath. It's literally going to go across the network and just download quite a lot. It's actually quite a large model still. I can't remember what the size of it is, but it's, it's, it's multi-megabytes um, downloading onto your computer. Right? So even mobile net is quite large. Right? You wouldn't just like, have it on your home page. For your, for your, don't do that, because it's, it's pretty big. Um, then, where am I gone? Uh, okay, then they're pretty simple. We need to c pass the canvas. So, um, where am I? I'm lost. Classify image. Classify image. There we go. So then, Oh, I haven't explained what the code's doing. I'm sorry. Um, so this is just doing kind of basically pretty simple, it's pretty simple stuff. It's getting, uh, it's using the uh, uh, kind of get user media API, which is um, going to get a stream from the camera. Okay. And then what we do every second, I call take snapshot. So every, I have a set interval, and every second I'm going to call take snapshot. And all that that's doing, all, all that that's doing is from the video stream, it's grabbing one frame. Um, and that's that drawing, it's that drawing that frame uh, into, in a, into a context. Ugh. And then it's called, let me call it classify image, right? So then we have the image and what we actually, now we want to know every second we want to, after we've loaded the model, we want to know what's inside it. So 
it's pretty simple really, you just do um, predictions Okay. Predictions, they've got to wait, model.classify. That's it. That's it. Right? Oh, I know you're all going to stay simple, Asim. It's really easy. Yes, it is easy. You're going to remember this moment. You're going to dream about this moment. You're going to wish this moment is going to come back to you. Right? This is it. Right? Um, and I can't spell predict. Yeah, there we go. Um, I don't even know what I have to do in the next one. You can do what you want. Basically, that, that just returns for you. Like, if you, if you wanted to print that, uh, you could print it on the console um, and see what it actually returns. Um, I think it returns an array. Yes, it returns an array. And then I'm just going to print that somewhere on the, uh, on the page. So if, you, if you're, like, a proper developer, not proper, that's a horrible thing to say. If, you're, uh, if you use one of the web frameworks in the world, you probably do, there's a better way of doing this. But if you're a vanilla person like me, um, this, is how, this is how it works. I'm not a vanilla person. Um, I'll, I'll paste this in there just, 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 just for the sake of saving everybody a headache. I'm going to paste this into the Slack channel. Yeah, just so you can, you can just copy and paste that there. Guess what? That's it. Done. You've loaded a model and you've used it. So now if I, I'm, am I still looking at main.js? I am there. Oh, oh I'll look at it. No, you can't see it if I look at it this way. Oh, here we go back again. Boop, 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 boop. Can you party, party parrot? Do it as in parrot. Hang on. Can I scream? Oh, I can. Hang on. Why don't I just record the desktop? There we go. This is just, just ignore me for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Stop. Awesome. Um, and that's it. So you should all be uh, seeing this working. Well, that, that's no. <laughs> I forgot that that isn't the point. The point is this. <laughs> so hopefully, on your computers, have, have people managed to get it working? Yeah? Powerful. Interesting. It is crazy. It's absolutely crazy that we can do this. So we, we live in this world full of surprises and technological miracles on a daily basis. But just let's take a second, just appreciate what's happening right now. In a browser, is detecting what it's seeing. Epic. It's the only word that you could use to describe. Nice, no, maybe use some other words. Um, That's it. I'll give you all a moment. Whoa. <laughs> What's it saying? Prison. Prison. <laughs> it does come up with some weird ones. Oh, it just said it, it just said I was a microphone. I think because of my beard. Yeah. Um, and uh, there we go. I'm going to leave it. Give you a few seconds while I plug in. And uh, was that an hour already? No. Are you serious? No. It was 45 minutes. Huh? Only a five-dollar bill is a toilet seat. Toilet seat. I didn't say it was any good, right? Just that it does stuff, right? That was it. Can it, can it detect to this thing? What's this thing say? Bathing cap. 
Hairspray. Water bottle. It's the background, I think, is that, is that you, want, you want a good, a good clean background as well, so that's probably a, 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 a causes a problem. But yes, um, I think I hinted to it earlier on today, like mobile net has its usefulness. Um, I use it a lot for, for teaching and training, um, practical usefulness. It's iffy because it's, no, it's really not that accurate. Like if you, if you really were looking for one of those things in that image net, if you were looking for a, whatever it was called, a, um, a scuba diver, right, it's one of them, then maybe it's useful for you. Um, oftentimes it's not, you maybe want to use an API. One thing it is useful for is something called transfer learning. I'm gonna leave it for a second. So they're all having fun, everybody's having fun. Let everyone have fun, I can see it. I mean, if you want to take pictures of what you're doing and tweet it and tag Joel Ake, you know, that would be nice. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to take a screenshot, no, you don't have to. I mean, you can. It would be, nice. be pleasant if you did. But you don't have to. You don't have to. It's not essential. But, um... What am I doing next? 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 Give me a second. You'll have fun there. I'll get set up on this side. What did I do? 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 Give me a second while I figure out what I did. Give me a second, I'm just trying to figure out where, where my code is. Yes. Joy Development Workspace. Ah, Joy Development Workspace. Joy Development Workspace. TFJS Workshop. TFJS Workshop. Do regression open. Yes, excellent. Right, and all right, so. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a zipper, okay, yeah. more or less. But I cannot still use it, right? Because yeah. 
So mobile net is, so if you are on a clean white background, it'll be a little bit more accurate, but not massively. You'll still find it, it's not gonna. So it's good for, um, in terms of practical use cases that you'll use today with mobile net in like your real world, no, right? It's not, it's not, it's not good enough for a lot of that stuff. It is good enough for certain things, but it really depends on your use case. What I think the real power of something like MobileNet, and I think one of the, just talking broadly really about JavaScript and machine learning, um, you're not really going to be training up incredibly complex things in JavaScript in the browser. You're just not. It's like single threaded. JavaScript's not like the best language to do in compute. To do a lot of these machine learning models, you need hundreds of servers running at it for, for weeks, you know? But what it is really good at is, well, but, but what is the pos possibility of a very interesting use case is something called transfer learning, right? With transfer learning, you take an existing model, an existing brain, and then this brain, MobileNet, has been, has been trained to recognize one of a thousand things. But during that journey of training it, remember the layers? The each layer and each node actually, if you, there's ways of interrogating a model and seeing, well, what does that node, what does it really understand? What is it seeing as part of that image? I'm afraid I don't have the, I'll have to get the slides up later on, I'll find them. But they, they, when, they, when they examine these networks, they can see that actually this node at the start is detecting this. All it can detect in an image is this, a curve like that, or another node it, it learns how to detect a corner. And then the next layer, maybe they determine one, one node has figured out how to see if something's an ear, right? And then at, very at the end, then you decide, oh, this is a face, right? Or, or a cat or a dog or something like that. What you can do is you can kind of lobotomize the last layer and you retrain it to learn something else. Because if, if you've got a model that already knows how to detect edges, corners, maybe colors, it, it's learned something, you can then retrain it to, to retrain to, to detect other things. I've got a friend who used MobileNet, it's called transfer learning. And that last layer learning, just train the last layer, doesn't require as much computation as training a whole model from scratch. So it's possible to do that stuff in JavaScript, possible um, sometimes in the browser. So that's where I think MobileNet is useful for. Okay, it's not detecting a lot of very clever things, but on the lower levels of that, of, that, of that model, it's detecting something, it's like a baby. You know, it's like learn something, but you just need to train the last mile. Or another way I describe it is, is imagine, imagine learning JavaScript from scratch. Or imagine teaching somebody JavaScript from, from scratch, or taking a Python developer and teaching them JavaScript. Like that second one, it's not going to be as much effort. And that's kind of transfer learning. And that's where it can start being useful. Yeah? Cool. APIs, if you want to do some really, uh, some really powerful stuff, you can get started straight away with APIs. If you want to like train stuff up, that's where you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't say categorically you, you won't, because maybe there is a use case where it's actually accurate enough, but yeah, typically no. But yeah. Um, any other questions? I can't remember. If you look in, I, I, is, it, is it not downloading for you? If you look in the network tab, because it's actually not one JSON file, that JSON file then triggers the loading of some shard files. So if you look in the network tab, you'll see, but it's many megabytes. It's not small. Um, so to get started with the regression, clone this bad boy. Bad boy? It's not, it's not, it's not good. Uh, bad person. Yeah.
Uh, if it's very, very simple, and maybe you can get away with something in the, in the browser. I know, I think I was talking to you earlier on about, but he, he did stuff in, in Node on the, on the server side, because it's just, okay. just a computer up. But yeah, you can still, it's doable in JavaScript. Yeah. yeah. I think the, it's good to play around with the stuff in the browser, because it's easy to play around with, but then if you need to get a little bit more compute and you want to stay in JavaScript, you can use the Node.js version of TensorFlow. And then if you really want to go for that, you can rewrite it in, a, in a Python. Yeah, I, for learning, and right now just for inferring, uh, in the browser, you mean? Yeah. yeah, mostly just for inferring. It's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's difficult to know really and what people are really using it for, but um, yeah. All right, has anybody cloned it? Who hasn't cloned it? That's a terrible question. Who hasn't cloned it? We're all good, excellent. Um, so regression, there's lots of different types of regression. Um, so we're looking at linear regression, which is kind of, you, you, maybe you remember this stuff. Um, you get a whole, you, you've got a whole bunch of dots, points, and you want to find the best fit line between them. It's kind of what is the, um, the linear relationship between these two sets of data. With logistic regression, which is more, oh no, that's polynomial. We have pol logistic regression, we have a polynomial regression, which is kind of a similar thing as linear regression, except you, you understand that the relationship is, is nonlinear, right? Like, uh, yeah, we call it logistic regression, which is more to do with uh, probabilities. We're not going to go into that. So, uh, for instance, this is a famous one. So, cricket chirps per minute, and ambient temperature. So that actually has a linear relationship. I, I suppose up until they die, <laughs> right? Up until they're dead, but up until then, it's a linear relationship. Um, famous more more temperature is the, the the more cricket chirps per minute. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's my friends. So uh, extrapolating this data can be a problem sometimes, right? So you need to take it with a pinch of salt. You need to understand your data to understand where where it might have a linear relationship and where it might not. Um, remember this. Remember this? Yeah? Yeah, here we go, back at school. Um, machine learning is maths. It's maths. There's just no way around it. I'm not good at maths. Um, so it's a real struggle for me. And I'm very, very lucky that I've got a lot of friends who, who know the space who are willing to, to spend time with me to, to help me figure stuff out. But yeah, it's maths, right? You, you do have to get to, get to know it quite well. Um, but anyway, this is, this is, the, this is the, uh, uh, an equation that describes a line. So um, y, the position on the y, 
coordinate of the line is equal to um, m, some variable m times x plus b. Now b would be if um, x is 0, so this would be 0, so that would mean b is 5 here, right? That's the constant. Remember this stuff? Ah, oh, so feel so clever. Remember all this stuff from school. Um, but that's basically it. And that's what we want to do here. So you've got, you, you've, got, you've got this whole bunch of data sets of points, and you want to know what the linear relationship is between them. Right, this is how you do it. Okay. Um, oh. And uh, why linear regression is a really good start to get to understand how to do neural networks is just because of this. Right? This is just a neuron. The same thing we had before. But we have uh, x. Imagine your x and y coordinate of your point is you your expected value and your, your input value, right? So your feature and what you expect. So it's kind of like having labeled data, a training set so you can train on. And then your M and B, what, what, what do we really want to do is what we want something that will figure out, given a set of points, which is your data set, the best fit line. So you really want to, it's gonna tune some values for, for, for M and B. That's what you're going to be doing. And that's why um, linear regression is a good, a good first step to understand how to build neural networks, because it's, it's going to teach you this, this, this one neuron. It's going to be so hard to get this one neuron right. But then once you've got this right, you can apply it to all of them and, and join them all together. All right? I forgot. I actually and, uh, was supposed to show you a demo. Let me show you a demo. Oh, no, I didn't. Ah. Clever asset. This is basically something like what we're going to build, right? This is what we're going to build today. So as you add points, it's going to figure out what that line is, and what that line is figuring out basically an m, and a value for m and a value for b. That's basically what it's going to figure out, and it's going to automatically figure out what those are from your data sets. That's it, All right? Uh, I think I skipped a slide. Let me go. Let me go, go through this again so I don't skip anything. So, yeah. And so then, um, let's say we gave it a value of x1 and y16. It then figures out. And let's just say, uh, um, what have I done here? What is this maths? Oh my god. Uh, M x plus b. Yes, right. So if we gave a value of, of x is equal to 1, m is 4, b is 12, y is equal to mx plus b, mx is 1 times 4, 4, plus b is 12, y is equal to 16. That's what this neuron would give us. However, we know, because it's our point that we created, that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 13. So we know that the values here are wrong. The optimizer is going to run and it's going to retune these things. Do I have another slide? Retune those things to be better value. And this thing here is called a loss function. This is the most important part of it. You need to describe how wrong you are. You need a function that tells you how wrong you are. And that's what it's all about. I mean, that's one. Great. Okay. All right. Hopefully, you should have a folder that looks a little bit like this. Yeah? Good. Create one. That's main.js is just, just, just create it, and that's where you're going to type stuff in. Because all these, all these other ones are is just uh, different bits of code that you can use. To, okay, cool. Uh, that you can use to figure out um, um, th that you can go to, right? So we're going to go through kind of one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, I'm going to show you linear regression. And then you're going to figure out all by yourself, you're going to figure out how to do polynomial regression. So you're going to figure it out, all right? Um, oh, yeah. 
I uh, checked in uh, TensorFlow.js library in the source code. That's how I code. Yeah? I check independent libraries into GitHub. Yeah? No one thought of that before. I, I thought of it. Okay, obviously don't do that if you're doing it in, in, in production, right? Use the, use the official version of it. I just checked in to make things simple. Um, we're also using a library called P5.js. I'm going to go through that very, very briefly so you can see how it works. It's um, a visualization library. Who here is a React developer? Vue? Angular? All right? Uh, P5.js is not like that at all. Right. Do not use P5.js. Do not use it in production. You're going to see why in a second. You should never ever use P5.js in production. It's just, it's just an interesting way to draw stuff. It's, it's, it's used a lot in teaching uh, younger people. And uh, I just didn't want to get stuck. I just didn't want to have an argument about a web framework. I just didn't want to have that discussion. So I used P5.js. Um, and then we're also going to use a, a main.js. We're just going to stick everything in, like all of our, all of our code as we, as we code along. Um, and I'm going to do things. Uh, today, as I'm going to go through this, I'm going to experiment a little bit. I'm going to go through things. I had some feedback from the last time I gave this workshop. And I'm going to try and go through these things in a different order. Fingers crossed this will work. But it should hopefully be a lot more engaging for you all as you go through. So right now you should have, this, in this index.htm file, make sure you've got a main.js and make sure you, you've got it here and it exists. Let me uh, actually rename mine. Main.js1 and I'm going to just empty this one out, right? And then however you, oh, I never. Well, you all did it with the mobile net. So I presume you all know how to open up the thing. Yeah? You need to open it with a, in a, in a, in, in, I'm using live server plugin, but um, if you use serve or whatever else that you're using locally, uh, go for it. And then that's it. It's, it's uh, well, nothing should be there because it should be, um, it's just um, your main.js is blank. I think I'm missing something. Give me a second. I'm missing explaining something. Am I? No, I'm not. I think I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right, so we're going to go through P5.js super quickly. So P5.js, uh, is amazing. It uses globals everywhere. So everything you've been taught about globals are bad is wrong. Globals are amazing. Okay? So what happens is, is, that, is that basically if, if there's two functions available called setup and draw, that's what it will call. Right? So it's expecting these functions of these specific names to be available. So setup is called before anything, helps you set up things. And draw is called. Well, let's figure out when draw is called. Let's just see. Right? So let's just copy. I'm just, if you want, you can just copy and paste it from .setup.draw, put it in your main.js, and hit save. Right? And then open up in the browser. Boom. <laughs> yeah? Do you see that? This is probably why you shouldn't use p5.js in production. Right, because it just it just draws as fast as possible, constantly. Um, and that's it, basically. Right, pretty cool. Um, I think it even does it. So it's too even when it no no. I think with Chrome, when you're not looking on the screen, it doesn't draw it. Oh no, it still draws it anyway. Um, so that's basically how what, what happens, and you, you're gonna there's gonna be drawing logic that you're gonna stick in draw, right? On the setup logic, stick in setup. The main thing you want to do is you want to create a canvas area 
which is where you should draw stuff. So if you go to two.canvas.color, you can grab that, that line from setup dot, the setup there and copy it into your main. Okay. Create canvas again, another wonderful global. And then we have these other things. It's now given us window width and window height. Another globals. Why is the coding not like this? Why don't we do it like this? It's so much fun, right? Basically, this is the window, the width, and the height of the window. Just saying create a canvas. It's literally creating a, a HTML5 canvas, the full size of the screen. And once you've got a canvas, you can do fun stuff. Like you can set the background, just the background. Right? I don't know what color that is. Maybe it's gray. It's red, red, green, and blue. That's all that is. Um, or you can actually, if you wanted to, you could kind of, well, let's just see it working first. Um, there you go. What is that doing right now? Every time draws called, it's painting the whole thing, every single pixel, that color, right? Drawing it from scratch. It's going to do it every frame. I can't remember. Try it out. I think you've got to put it in draw. Anyway, you need it in draw because if you draw a line, it doesn't disappear. You've got to paint over everything again and draw it all again, right? It's great. It's fun though, it's fun. This is how. Coding should be. Or you can do like um, red, something like that. Nice. Um, so you can set a background. And I think this is the point where I'm going to jump ahead. Say again. Oh, you know, you know P5JS? No loop. Yeah, I think I remember this. With a, with a capital L? Yeah. And it stops the looping, yeah? Boom. And then uh, loop, right? Loop to start looping? Well, let's just see. Yay! This is why it's so much fun, yeah? It just works, right? You just try it, type, uh oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't use no loop. Let it loop, let it loop. Let it loop. Uh, and I think this is the point where I'm going to be um, going to skip ahead. Hang on. Let's get three, four, five, or go over very fast. I'll go over it very fast. Three, you can have a look at it if you want later on, but this is how you draw text. You define a, a fill color. This is almost just like, it's all sequential. I know with JavaScript it's all about callbacks and stuff, but this stuff is just sequential. What is the color of the, of the pen? What is the font that I want to use from this point onwards? Or what is the text size I want to use from this point onwards? Draw the text hello world in this position, x and y. x is at the bottom. y is at the, y zero is the bottom, no, top. Can't remember now, let's figure it out. Um, if you want to, yes, let's just do that actually then. I can copy and paste that into my draw function. There you go. Hello world, I like ice cream. I don't like ice cream. I'm, in I'm intolerant to milk protein, not lactose, milk protein. Very bad for me. Um, and also Brexit supporters, just two things. Uh, hang on, I'm lost now. I'm lost. I'm lost. What am I, what am I supposed to be? Yes. Three, four, five. That's how you draw text. You can also draw shapes. So if you're doing, if you're used to kind of like drawing tools, like you can set the stroke weight, uh, the stroke color. You can draw an ellipse of this X and Y and this size. And then you can say from this point onwards, onwards, no stroke, right? So that's what I'm going to do here as well. Just going to 
drop it in there. Okay. I'm just going to draw a circle in the center of the screen, theoretically in the center of the screen, because it's window width divided by two and window height divided by two. Right? Let's see. Let's get rid of that. 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 And let's get rid of that. Get on there. Boom. Very, very faint circle. Why is it that color? I don't know. Oh, because I haven't said that I've lost the background. Let's set the background, 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 background. Oh my God. How do you spell gray? G-R-E-Y or A-Y? A. -Y? A. Is, are they both valid? Are you serious? Have you just like blown my mind? No, wait. Are they both valid? Was that the same shade? Is it the same? Have I just learned something? I feel I should have known this already by now. I didn't know that. Okay, excellent. Um, and the stroke, let's set the stroke to like red or something like that. You can do this. Yeah. So you can draw circles, right? I really feel I should have known that. Why is the center white? I think I, I must have said it. Uh, oh, interesting. That's, I think that's the fill. So the fill must be white by default. So if I set fill to blue, maybe. Fill. Oh my god. How do I not do that? Escape? Yeah. Blue. Got the makings of my next website right here. <laughs> All right, color, color selection, spot on. Um, and the next thing I was going to skip over was five. And lines. Okay, did I go over lines? No, I didn't. So lines is kind of very similar. You just have a, a line that you can draw. In fact, let's just draw a line in the middle of it. Let's not go nuts. Um, so a line. X, Y to begin, X, Y to end. No, no. X1, Y1, yeah, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So 10. So it should be kind of going, no, that way down, I think. Yeah. So the X and Y is top left, which is really annoying when you're drawing graphs and lines because you want, you want the Y to be here, uh, Y0 to be there. But anyway. That draws a line, boom, you can draw a line. All right. Okay. And now I'm going to skip to seven, boom. Okay. Cool things you can do. Again, loving the globals. You've got to embrace the globals. Okay, they're great, they're fantastic. If a function called mouse clicked exists, guess when it's called? Every time the mouse is clicked, why is life, why is it not this simple? Simple, right? Mouse clicked. Mouse X and mouse Y are helpfully set to the X and Y position of the mouse at the moment that it was clicked. Then you can set, draw a circle at that position of radius 10. So let's just copy and paste that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of my, get rid of my draw function just to, to clear it out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, for God's sakes. Boom. And add a mouse clicked. This is it. And if you just want to copy and paste this, you can pop, copy and paste it from seven dot mouse clicked, right? Then that's it. And if I go here, yes. You should be able to now do this all over the screen. Pretty cool, hey? Pretty cool. 
P3. Now you're starting to like P5JS, aren't you? Yeah? Yeah? Now you're wondering, your mind's trying to think of ways you can release this in production. You can't. Don't. Right? Well, there you go. Give you all a second to, to try and get that while I frantically remember what the next thing is. Okay. Hopefully you're all working on that. What I want you to do, I want to give you a little bit of time now to focus on this. Create two variables that are, am I letting these? Am I letting these? Hang on. Let's let them. Yeah, let. Oh my God. X's, right? Let Y's. Right? I just want you to, every time the mouse is clicked, see this X and Y? Just start collecting them. Collect all the X's in the X's array, collect all the Y's in the Y's array. Just do that. It's getting gentle. Gentle introduction. Hopefully, wasn't too too difficult. If this is how this is all this is this is all you, you should hopefully have needed to do. Um, X is dot push mouse X. Y is dot push mouse Y. Okay. Um, let's not bother drawing it for now. So that's it, right? Uh, in fact, I can just uh, con It's a clever way of, of, of writing all this stuff, isn't it? Like use a destructure or something, and then man, I'm. Tell me if I'm being an idiot. What am I doing right now? Okay, I'm just, does this work? 
man, how am I even doing? How am I even thinking right now? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Can I do that as well? Let's just, let's just, if this works, I'm going to be, I'm be happy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's working. So that's basically creating me two arrays. One with all the X values and one with all the, all the, all the Y. Is it? How come it's only going printing one? No, it should be printing two. Here we go. There's two. One, two. Right, okay. X's and Y's. Right. However, you can see it's actually storing in like the actual X and Y of the position in the screen. And my screen might be different to your screen. Um, so a lot of the time when we're doing with stuff with machine learning, what we want to do is we want to normalize our data and usually want to normalize it to between zero and one. That's kind of a really good thing to do. Keep everything normalized between zero and one. So if you know the width of your screen, you know that you, you clicked kind of there, then that's probably, probably about 75% or 0.75. But P5JS has a, like a nice function that allows you to, uh, to do that, and that's called map. Okay? And with map, what it does... Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste the whole thing. The bottom there, here we go. So, what map does is it kind of maps a value from one range to another range. So, what this is saying um, is we've got the number 500. That range that comes from a, a range of 0 to 1000. And I want to map it to a range of 0 to 1. Right? So it's going to normalize it to 0 to 1. So if, we, if I actually now, if you, if, you, if you look at that printed out, oh, shizzle, what have I just done? It's printing out 0 0.5. Okay? What we want to do is we want to use the window width. Because depending on where you clicked in the window width, you want it to say, That'd be one, that'd be zero. I'm kind of normalize our numbers. This is just a standard thing you want to do in machine learning with your data sets. You want to normalize everything from zero to one. So given that, given that's how map works, right? Normalize the X's, the X's and the Y's, so that it's storing a value from zero to one instead of 100, 150, something like that. Do you got me? The helpful variables you want, you want is window width and window height, right? There's two clues I'm giving you, right? So map, window width, window height. If you want to see other examples of map working, you can look in six.map.js. There's lots of examples there to, 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 to play around with. But that's basically what we want to do here. Give you a few minutes. We're not... We haven't touched on TensorFlow yet, have we? Right? I know. I know. We're getting there. Again, as I said previously, you're going to remember those moments when you were just drawing circles on a, on a page. You'll remember it fondly.
Okay, so... Uh, all right, I'll just show you, I'll give you the answer. So basically, how you would make that work would be this. And what I'm really doing is, I'm, we're gonna, we are going to start, I'm not going to, I'm showing you enough of the code so that later on when you, need to, when you need to start changing some of this stuff yourself, you kind of know what you're looking at, right, in terms of drawing, drawing, drawing stuff and in terms of getting data in the right way. So um, if we want to normalize the x's, okay, we want to push x, the input is mouse x, between 0 and max, and max from the x's is going to be the width, so it's just going to be window width, right? And then uh, we, want it, we want it to map from 0 to window width to 0 to 1. Same thing goes for the y's. Mouse Y, but this time it's window height. Okay, that's the map. That's the usefulness of the map function. So now, if you go to, uh, ooh, my wife's calling me. So now, uh, wait. Ah, I should stop, stop it, stop it printing out the other stuff. Why is it printing it? Okay, here we go. Okay, so now, if I should click it there, it should be zero, zero, or close to it. Yeah? Zero. And if I click it right to the end there, it should be near, like, one for x. Uh, that, uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the, this is the second one. And we click bottom right, it should be uh, almost one, one. Yeah. So 0 0.99, 0 0.974. So we've just kind of normalized everything from 0 to 1. All right? If you look in um, the functions, uh, calculate line? No. Calculate, collect points, which is kind of the, the collect points is, is where, we're, where we're going towards, what, what we should end up with. You can see I've actually got some functions here. And all they are is just a map function. But um, I've just kind of created a, a help of helpful versions of them to that do essentially the same thing. So norm just saves you from having to, to write all of that stuff um, yourself. 
So if I put it here, I'll just paste them at the top like that. So with these, all this is doing is calling map. We're providing in the max. And norm x is, is, is just doing the same thing where it's, it's, it's giving you window width. So with, with these helper functions, you can replace this with just norm x and norm y. That's all that those functions are doing. So don't be scared of those functions at the top. All they're doing is what you just did for in just fewer characters, right? Hopefully, let's see if that works. Yes, oh my God, I'm so good at this coding stuff. I should be paid for it. Um, yeah, and if you actually look at collect points, that's, that's all I'm doing. We should be basically here. Ah, oh, that's how you do it. That's a clever way of doing it. There you go. Um, yeah. So now, let's look a look, let's take a look at uh, um, the map, click point, explain lines. So I think I explained lines very briefly before. So you have a line, x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, before I showed you um, uh, the equation of a line, remember that? y is equal to mx plus b. For some reason, I don't, I, I, in the code I then changed it to um, y is equal to ax plus c. I don't know. I must have had a reason. So, oh, then these shouldn't be consts. So all I'm going to do is at the top of my here, I'm going to add another few lets. Let A, let C. Okay, there's just two values. And then I'm going to create a function which is going to give me a value of Y given a value of X, right? Uh oh Okay. So get Y. Given some value of x, this is just mx plus c, but for some reason, and I cannot figure out, oh, I remember now why. Yeah, I remember why. Um, I used a, a x plus c. That's all that's doing, right? That's all that that's doing. So, given that, given that this is some new information that you've got, given that you know how to draw a line, can you draw this line? You know, this is a line and it should have, it should look like that or it should look like that or maybe it looks like that. You don't know. Draw this line on the screen. Remember x is zero here. x is uh, window width on the other side. That should give you x1, x2, and the function should give you the y's. Then you should be able to join two, two dots together. You got me? Yeah? Try doing that. Try using this function to draw a line on the screen. Any line. And you have, maybe you have to use the draw, the draw function. Like that.
You're, you're very close to starting to write some TensorFlow code. I promise. Very close. Very close. I'll give you another minute or so. now on the screen it's going to be legendary so what do you want to do let's get an let's get an x1 where's the x1 going to be it's going to be the furthest left of the screen so it's going to be zero let's get a, an a, um, y1 okay so what is the y y given a value of x well we've got an, we've got a nice function above called get y let's just call it get y x1 there you go now we've got an x1 and a y1 let's get an x2 x2 is equal to the furthest right of the screen window width let's get a const y2 get y x2 boom now we have an x1 y1 x2 y2 and then let's draw a line. Let's give it a stroke. Oh, what the hmm. And let's give it a weight to give it some, you know, weightiness, thickness. And then let's draw our line. So, ah, oh, what the nah. line x1, y1 x2, y2. Boom. This should hopefully ha huh? draw stroke stroke red What have I done wrong? Ah, I got two draw functions. <laughs> the beauty of globals. There you go. Two draw functions, right? One overrides the other one, right? Boom. Okay. I draw did elided. And if you wanted to do, if you want to change what you're drawing, what your uh, the line, you can just change it here. So you can change that to 0.5. Not 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and it changes the line that gets drawn, right? Uh, minus 2, and you can change this to 300, right? So now we, we've created something that draws a line based off of that equation that we have, that we had before, right? So given that, let me get back to where we were, 1, 150, I don't know, what was it? Something like that. 0.5. Uh, that's the line. So, and we've also got this thing at the bottom. I've still got mine there. Where is it? Here. I'm going to just, uh, 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 I'm going to still draw the circles. Give me a second. Ellipse. Okay, and let's give it a stroke weight of like three and black. Okay, 
So I've got this line here. We've also got this data point here. Okay. Remember, we need to figure out the loss. Like, how wrong is this line? If, if all my circles were here, would that be a big loss number or a small loss number? Small, small, right? If all my points were here, but yet it drew the line here, would that be a large or a small loss? Large loss, exactly, right? That's what we need to calculate. We need a way of knowing how far, how wrong it is. And we use something called uh, a common one we use, and it's used all the way through. You'll see all the time machine learning is mean squared error. Okay, mean squared error. And you, you could get away with like ages now just using mean squared error in a lot of things because it's just it's a good loss function to use generally for for machine learning. So what this is is given given some value. So given this. Um, value of x here, um, you get, this is, this is uh, the actual value, and this is one, and this is one. And yet, however, if you were to look on the equation, it would kind of give you these numbers here. So you figure out the distance, okay? Square. You square it, Oh man, this is where the jet lag's really gonna kick in for a second. I need corrections. If anyone wants to correct me, correct me. You square it, and then you divide it all by the means. You, want, you end up with one number. Okay, the reason you square it is because sometimes you might get a negative number. Yeah, and you need it to kind of, you don't care about the signage. You don't care the direction it is wrong, right? So that's why you square things. Um, and that's basically what we want to, to do now, is we need to calculate the loss. It's super important to understand your loss. It's super important, because remember everything I showed you? Like, it needs to know, TensorFlow needs to know how wrong something is in order to tune something. So that's what we're gonna do now. And in fact, if you go to, I'm gonna write this out. Yes, no. Man, it's going to be dangerous if I write this out. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm sorry. I'll just go through it line by line. Yeah. So the same code you saw before. Uh, same stuff you did before. Mouse clicked. You've done, you've done all this before. You're storing everything in X's and Y's. And then you call loss. Remember? Our A and C is fixed here right now. What happens when you call loss? For each of the X's, okay, you get the X and Y. You then pass it through, you kind of need to do this kind of take the zero to one value. Oh no, you don't need to do that. Anyway, that's what I did. You basically get the Y value. Um, you take the difference. Okay, that might be negative. You square it, you sum it all together. You divide it by all the x's, all the values, and you get like a, something called a loss. And you print it out, right? Um, and I've actually got in the rest of the code here, if you copied and pasted the code from calculate loss, you'll see that I'm actually drawing that loss value on the screen. I'm drawing it on the screen, okay? As, as text. So that's, all, that's the only real difference between this and your, your other code before. That's it, just calculating a loss value, right? So if that, I now load this up in the browser, this is what you see. And if I draw, a, if I click here, if I add it, there's no, there's no X's, and, X's and Y's now because I haven't added anything. If I add one close to it, oh, fingers crossed. Yes, the loss is low, right? The loss is very low. If I hopefully start doing it away, 
so loss increases and now if I add some more data points closer to it the loss reduces right that's what's going on and so what imagine this is our data here this is this is our actual data like something like this the lines wrong the lines wrong but now you have a number that describes exactly how wrong it is and TensorFlow then uses that loss to figure out how to adjust the A and the C that's all you need to do is you need to find the right value of A and C so it fits perfectly in all those dots that's all that we're doing here is we're tuning that value of A and C that's all we're doing and that's the magic of TensorFlow it's not really magic it's nothing you, you, right now you're like is this it? this is it this is it this is all the machine learning is. Right? Uh, okay. We're going to hit TensorFlow. Before we hit TensorFlow, we have to hit maths. Maths, right? Matrices. Go, let's go there. Matrix maths. Dig deep. Dig deep. I wanted to get some food. Hang on. What did I want? Not food. What's the other stuff that you get? It's not food. It's uh, coffee? Did I want a coffee? Oh, I can't remember. I think I wanted a coffee. Yeah. Okay. Matrix maths. Um, it's a simple two-dimensional matrices. Matrices. Okay, just, just go. Remember this stuff. Back before, back, back, back when. Uh, when you're kind of adding kind of matrices together, this is it. As long as they're the same, same size and shape, you just kind of add the appropriate stuff together, and it gives you the, the output matrix. Okay. Get broadcasting. Don't know why I've got that. Why do I have this? Oh, sorry, I do have this. Transposing takes a matrix, flips it on a side. Right? Subtraction. Kind of the same as the element wise subtraction. Element wise. Same as addition. You just take the appropriate one away. I didn't draw this one properly. Just didn't have, just didn't do it. You can figure it out. Division, same as normal. You just kind of take that divided by that, that one divided by that one. It's kind of element wise. It kind of goes that way. Uh, you can also just multiply by constant all the way through. So it multiplies all of it together. And then uh, you can also do what's called element wise multiplication, which is one times two. And this one is 2 times 3, which is 6. 3 times 4, 12. 4 times 5, 20. I'm going to quickly go through these, and you're going to go through some examples in TensorFlow. But I want you to have this in your head, and then you, as you're going through the examples in TensorFlow, uh, some of this stuff hopefully will, uh, will uh, go through. And you also have this thing called a dot product, which allows you to do kind of like a zipping up. Maybe that's the best way of describing it. So if you've got two ones of, of the opposite shapes, you can kind of zip through. So all of this row plus all multiplied and then plus all of that row and added up together is equal to that. And that equals that. Goes that way, dot product. Um, no, that's the only examples. And what I'm going to show you now is how to do all of those in TensorFlow because you're going to need to know that. So open up, no, 10A, oh man, wait, yes, okay, okay, in this file, you're going to see this thing's called quiz, under the quiz, you're going to see this thing called answer, don't scroll, to the answer, give it a go. Just, just try. Don't, don't go mad. 
just, just give it a go. Try it out, right? Don't scroll all the way to the answer. Um, but, uh, oh. I'm just going to stop copying these into my main. In fact, I will just get rid of all of this. Okay. So this is how you create a one-dimensional array, a 1D tensor in TensorFlow. So ten, once, you, once you load a TensorFlow, um, all that a tensor is is just a race. Right? You can have a scalar, which is kind of one value. This is a 1D tensor, which is what you'd normally call just like an array. 2D, a second rank tensor, is a two dimensional array. Then you get a three, third dimensional, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, sixth. You can, you can go crazy deep um, in terms of dimensions. And it gets really hard to visualize. Um, so that's why using something called uh, rank and shape is useful. So if I now print this, what you'll see is. Oh, Why is it not printing the rank and the shape? Console log. I don't know why that's not printing out. Can anyone see why that's not print? Oh. <laughs> it is printing out just above. Um, oh, sorry, it is printing out. So the shape, the rank is one because it's one D, and the shape is three because it's just the length of three. It's just a one D array with the length of three. So it tells you the shape, and then what you can do is uh, a dot print. So you can't do console log a and annoyingly. You got to do a dot print, and that prints you out kind of a, a, a visual uh, look at the tensor. If you are printing something crazy long, a dot print is nice because it only prints some of it and it doesn't kill your console. So that's why it's useful. Um, if you do want to make it kind of clearer, you can just you know say tensor 1D and it will, try, it will give you an error if you give it something other than 1D. If you don't, provide the 1D, it will try and figure out what it is from the data you're giving it. Okay. The other thing, uh, and then you can give it like a different shape. So now we're going to give it a 2D array there. Do you know what? I'm going to just paste it here. Okay, and then, so now I'm giving it a 2D, two-dimensional array, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so this is a rank two, because it's two-dimensional. This helps, and we're only dealing with two-dimensionals right now, so it's, it's, it's useful. When you're dealing with three, four, and five, you need to know this stuff. Um, and the shape is two by two, two by two. But then when you print it out, it's printing out like that, less tensors. Let me open up on the other screen so that I can just copy and paste. Um, another way you can do it is you can just give it a flat. You can give it as one, two, three, four, uh, just as a 1D array. And then you can say, actually, I'm going to give you as a flat array, but the actual shape is two by two. You can do it that way if you want, and that's useful, very useful, especially when you're loading up tons of data and you just stored it as one CSV file, and you just want to load it up and go, here it is, by the way, this is the actual end shape, don't bother. You'd have to reformat it into the right shape before you give it. But anyway, there you go, it's just done that. Um, now we have a quiz. Now we have a quiz. Yes, we have a quiz. Right. Make a. Oh, no answers. Don't go to the answers. Make a rank one tensor of four, five, six. Remember, rank one tensor is just a 1D array. 
four, five, six. And then a rank two tensor, look how that's laid out, four, five, six. What does that mean? Column, four, five, six. Then a rank three tensor, three dimensional. What? Yeah, rank three. Oh, fuzzle. Oh my god. Four, five, six, that way. Look at those brackets. That's insane. Right? Try that out. Go for it. Let's give it a go. Oh, or maybe maybe I'll give you a second. Let's go, let's go for it. All right, so we have 
Um, so the question was, let me copy and paste the question. Make a rank. Make a rank one tensor four, five, six. Let's try that. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, you can just, just type it out like this, four, five, six. Pretty simple. Uh, let's print it out as well. Four, five, six. Boom, boom, four, five, four, five, six. There you go. Simple. Simple is. Um, you can do other ways. You can, if, want, if you want to, you could do 1D. Um, add a bit, 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 bit of um, uh, type. No, it's not ten. It's not type checking. It's kind of, it's kind of type checking, but not really. Uh, or if you did really want to be completely um, specific, you could then say, give it a shape, and the shape is three. If you want to be really specific, right? A rank two tensor. So for that one, you would basically do uh, well. You could literally just give it this, right? And then figure the rest out. Uh oh, right? Uh oh, no, it won't. That way. And fingers crossed. Is that what I wanted? Yes, yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, four, five, six. Columna, four, five, six, right? But again, you can see the shape there is three, one. Okay, three rows of one value in each row. So if you wanted to, you could be, you could give it like this. Four, five, six, with a three, one. You could do it that way. Same difference, okay? Uh, what the hell is this? What's this? Oh my God. Let's give it a go. What is even this? What does this even look like? Like, how can you visualize this? I can't even, it's just another dimension. I can't even visualize it. It's insane. But basically, this is it. Uh oh. Uh, what do I do? Where? One more. One more? A daughter. My daughter was doing her homework the other day and they start, she started to do uh, computer science, like she's 13, started to do computer science at school. She's like, ask him! Or what? I go, stop working! And I looked at it and she'd, she'd like missed out some brackets. And yeah, you missed out some brackets. I don't know why, I missed out the brackets. She put the brackets in and it worked. And my wife's a programmer as well and I said, I'll, daughter's just got a first brackets error, right? Just imagine that the first time, it's right there. The rest of her life, she's going to get a million of those. It's there for the first time. Um, anyway, so that's what it looks like. But still, like, how do you visualize it? It's, it's kind of like, how, what does it even mean? Like, and this is why the shapes get, become even more useful now. Because it's like three... Are they even columns? I don't even know what to call them. Three thing? Layer? Yeah, three layers. Three Zs. It's like another thing. It's like that's the shape. Three of something, and then each of those things has one of something, and each of those things has one of something. Right? You have to start thinking in this way. Remember mobile net? Yeah? I told you. Yeah, mobile net. That was fun times, mobile net, wasn't it? Yeah, that was good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and that's that. Okay, so you can do other things. So you can transpose a matrix. Uh, let's do that here. What does a three-dimensional matrix look like when it's transposed? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, no. Yeah. It looks like that. Whoa. 
but yeah, if we, if, if we did this in a, in a 2D thing, that might make a little bit more sense. Um, you can visualize that a little bit better. We're getting there, I swear. We're getting somewhere. We're close, right? So if this was four, five, six, we'll then go the other way, transpose. Um, you can add things together. Let's go here, let's go here. Right? Two tensors. We all know what this is doing now. This is turning this into a two-dimensional tensor, 2.2. Two two. And this is a, just another way of describing a two-dimensional tensor. We can add A, add B, and then print it out. And that's it. That's doing the element-wise addition that we showed before. But we can also do something, and this is kind of more tensorflow-y than anything else. This is not proper matrix multiplication. But you can broadcast. Uh oh, you can use broad blah, 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 broadcast, which is where it, if some data is missing, it will extrapolate it, extrapolate it, repeat it for you automatically. So normally, when you're doing addition, you would, and, and A is a two-dimensional, like one, four values. The thing you add it to has to have four values. We can just give it one value, and it will go, nah, I'll copy it four times. It's called broadcasting. And we're going to use an example of that, and that's what works. That Did that broadcast? Eight, three, eight, four, six, the last one should be 10. Yeah, that broadcasted. And uh, you can also do subtraction as well as addition the same way as you did before. So A, subtract B, same as addition. You can also do division. I'm going to skip that out because you don't need it. And then you can also multiply, same way as you did before, multiply by a constant. Uh, A mol 2, print. There we go, multiplied. And you can also uh, multiply by another matrix. I think I'm going to skip the rest because I think this is all you need for this particular example. But this is doing the same thing as you did before, so it's going to be 1 times 2 then 2 times 3, then 3 times 4, then 4 times 5. And that's what it should print out. So the last one should be 20. Yes, maths. I don't think we need to know, do the rest. Okay. Hopefully, if I, if I skipped enough, I skipped the right stuff, that should be all the matrix maths you need to know in order to do the rest of it. All right? All right. I am just going to uh, read, read through this, am I? Yeah, I want you to get to the point. Give me a second. I've lost track of where I am. Uh, you... Oh yeah, I remember. So then we take it from... Yeah. So then we take the calculate loss. If you take the calculate loss code to begin with, now we're actually going to start doing some real TensorFlow stuff. Uh, 
I'm going to mess this up. I'm sorry. I want to show you how to do linear regression. I'm going to go through it, and then, then I'm going to ask you to do polynomial regression yourself. Okay? I'm going to mess up some brackets at some point. I don't trust myself right now. I'm just going to talk through the code. I apologize. Well, I don't apologize. So, this is basically the same code as we had before with the loss. You can see you've got the, the get y, the norm x, the denorm y. But we've, now we've got this kind of other section with some TensorFlow stuff. But at the bottom, we've, we've got the same stuff. We've got, kind of, kind of got the mouse clicked. We've got the drawing, drawing the points on the screen. They're drawing the line, drawing the loss. It's the same code as you had with the calculate loss, but we've got this kind of TensorFlow bit at the top. What's that doing? All right? We create these things called variables. These are things that the variables they can they can change. These are things we want to change. The A and the C, right? We initialize them with a random number. This is our weights to our node. Okay. We then create what's called an optimizer. This is the thing that tunes the values of A and C. We give it a learning rate. Learning rate tells you, tells the optimizer how quickly it should try and, or how large it should try and tune those numbers to get to the right value. Okay, how, what a big jump it's going to make. So if you did 0.5, it's going to maybe try and, it's not going to do 0.5, it maybe it'll change each weight by 0.5 as you go down. And that maybe that'll make you train faster, but at the same time, maybe you'll overshoot and go to the side if you think about it, right? So normally you want to have a, a pretty slow learning rate like that, okay? That's the ideal thing to have. I think I've got 0.5 there for some other reason. Um, if you look in the TensorFlow documentation, there's lots of different ones you can use. API, uh oh, API, oh shizzle, come on. Let's go here. Um, am I there already? I am there already. SGD. Oh man, they've changed the, the docs train. Yep. Oh, this is proper TensorFlow, that's why. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There's lots of different types of those optimizers that you can use. This is called stochastic gradient descent. Simple one that you can all that you can try and use. But there's other ones there. And if you go through some of the other examples, you can try using some of those. But for for us right now, we're just going to use stochastic gradient gradient descent. Um, And then we've kind of got a predict, which is basically just like get y, but for TensorFlow. It's like get y, but for TensorFlow. Get y, you could just pass in normal numbers. But now we're dealing with TensorFlows and tensors. So we do that matrix multiplication. A dot mol x, which the values it passing in, add our c. So a is this a. x is actually going to be our full list of x's, so it's basically like a matrix, like a, if you've got 100 points, it'll be 100 deep. That's what you're passing in in one go, because it's doing a matrix multiplication. You're doing all those calculations at once in the predict function. And what it's going to give you, it's going to give you an array of results. That's what predict is going to give you. For a given array of x's, tensor of x's, it's going to give you a tensor of y's. Um, and you do this this loss function again, remember that loss function we spoke about before? 
given the predicted y's, subtract the actual y's, mean squared mean square error. This is how you do mean squared error in TensorFlow. You've got an array of y's, right? What you've calculated. Then you've got the actual y's that you clicked. You take one from the other. You then get an array of the differences between those y's. Some are going positive, some are going to be negative. So you square them to make them more positive. Then you take the mean, mean squared error, right? Uh, data sync is just some is just a way. Once you're dealing with tensors, you can't. You, maybe you have to dot print to actually get the actual value inside it. You go use data sync. And then this is the actual training thing. This is where it gets tensor framing, tensor tensor flowy. So uh, for a given number of iterations, you want to go through. Go through all the X's. Um, the current iteration is the current epoch. It's just a normal loop, right? I'll go to TF Tidy in a second. You create a tensor. We're creating a one dimensional tensor of all the X's. That's all this is a 1D tensor. I've done it before. Then we're doing a 1D tensor of all the Y's. This is just the normal X's and Y's that you've collected from the mouse clicks. That's what you're doing. I missed the whole section, which is why this is going so fast. I missed the whole section. I really apologize. Let's go back, rewind. Let's rewind. Let's rewind. I knew this was like, I was like, I haven't covered this. How is this? I'm not normally like this. Okay. I missed 11. I went straight to 12. I missed 11, right? I knew this. Okay, let's go. Start from scratch again. Okay, let's delete this. That went from like, zero to a hundred like straight that went so yeah I'm sorry it is gonna go from zero to, to 30 though I'll tell, you that, I'll tell you that right now okay let's create tensorflow you create a variable no it's a variable that's all it is something that, that has a value so it has a value of 4.12 we then can then create an array of one, a 1D array, five long, of two, 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 okay? And then, just like you saw before, we can perform maths operations. Yeah? The Y's, two, 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 multiplied by X, 4.12, and you get the average of it, right? So that should be... Uh, 8.24, 8.24, 8.24, 8.24, 8.24, 8.24, and the average of that should be 8.24, right? Yeah, okay, that's what that, that's what that should print. Let's do res.print. Wow. I really skipped ahead then, didn't I, before? Okay. 8.2! Okay. We're in the lecture today about numbers. There you go. Uh, close enough, 8.24. Did I just save that? I did, didn't I? Um, all right, okay. And uh, yeah, this is, this is why I didn't, why I said I didn't, to, to actually get the value of a tensor, that's when we do res.datasync, okay? So that would return a floating point array and we're just getting the first value of it. All right. So let me ask you a question. What, what would the value, we want to train something here so that the result of this here is zero. Yeah? The result of this line here 
is zero, res is zero, okay? What does x have to be for that to give us zero? Zero, right? Has to be zero. I want to train this with TensorFlow. I want TensorFlow to turn that into zero for me. I want TensorFlow to turn that into zero for me, right? That's what we want it to do. So we create, <laughs> God, I skipped so much ahead. That was shocking. Um, so this is when we start using TensorFlow, okay? So we create an optimizer. We can just go straight like that, okay? We we'll create an optimizer. Oh, <laughs> sorry, spelt it wrong. No, no, go on. Uh, optimizer. We start off with that. And we're going to call, uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to print out the value of x here. Let's print out twice. And then in between that, I want to call optimizer.minimize. I'm going to explain this in a second, okay? All right. So it prints out x. It should be 4.12. We want, it to, we want the optimizer to minimize some value for us, right? Minimize the loss. The loss is always, we always want the loss to be less, a loss number to be less. That's what we call minimize. We're minimizing a loss, always. We pass in a function, and that function is basically going to return, um, it's going to be a tensor, so it's going to be y's, okay? It's a tensor here. Multiplied by x. x is a variable mean square, right? So if that's, that's the same as, or well, we're squaring it as well, but anyway, that's the same as essentially this. Um, TensorFlow knows, this isn't, this isn't returning an equation, this is, re, this is returning like the description of an equation, and it knows that x is a variable. So it knows it's not gonna try and change anything in the y's, because the y's is just a tensor. It's gonna try and optimize those values, it knows that you're, return, that you're giving it an equation where one of them is a variable. So it knows that it can only tune the variable, right? That's what it knows. And it's going to try and tune it so that it gets, um, so, that, so that the y's become zero. Because if, if, if the y's become zero, then that's the lowest well, it can actually go negative, actually, but that's why we square it, so it won't go negative. So what, will, what, so what does this show here? So if we now go into here, you can see, there you go. 4.2, 4.09. What? TensorFlow changed a value of x all by itself, all by itself, because it knew... It's trying, it's trying to minimize, it hates loss. It's trying to minimize a loss. If you change this learning rate to like five, whoa, it went completely the other direction, right? That's what, it's, that's what the learning rate's all about. If you change it to be like, like that, we change it only a tiny, I didn't change it at all, that's too much. Change it a tiny, tiny amount, right? So the learning rate is important. The learning rate, if the learning rate is small, you're gonna slowly, 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 slowly get to the right answer, but it's gonna take you a while to get there. If the learning rate is too big, you're gonna zoom past, but then probably overshoot and go to the side. So that's, choosing a good learning rate is an important. That's Well, yeah. Yeah, it would go negative to blah, 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 blah. yeah. So which is why we square it to make it well. Yeah, why we square it. Yeah. Uh, okay, but that's not really that useful because we're only running it once. We need to keep on doing this until it gets to where we want it to be, and all we do is wrap it in a loop. That's it. We just, do this, we just do this 
loads. And so, this is where I'm going to do a for loop, like totally wrong. Oh, have I got a thingy? Why is it not? Am I messing up? Tab? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, screw it. I'll just copy and paste from the other screen here. Oh, it's added too much code. Who needs that much code? Don't need that much code. And then there. All right. So now I'm just going to run it a thousand times. I'm just doing exactly the same optimizer thing, but I'm running it a thousand times. That's all I'm doing. And so what it's going to do is it's just going to try and tune that number x over that period of time. So now you can see. Let's try it. Let's, let me refresh. You see? It's tuning it. Remember, for this, was that a thousand? Oh my god. It's going to get to zero. So let's now choose uh, something like that. Maybe we'll go faster. See? It's pretty, it's, it's, gone, it's pretty much gone to zero. With 18 decimal places, right? That was pretty fast. That's all the TensorFlow is doing for us. That's it. We tell it some variables. We give it some data. We wrap it all in, in matrices and tensors. And it then goes, OK, what's your loss function? All right, whatever. I'm just going to try and minimize the variable, change the variable so that this loss is, a le is the less it could be, is the least it could be. All right. Um, OK, one thing to note, though. One thing we're kind of very, very, very uh, uh, used to in JavaScript is you never have to worry about memory, ever. We just know that when we create something in JavaScript, it takes up some memory on your computer, but JavaScript knows at some point later to release that memory back out, right? We know that, right? However, TensorFlow uses uh, your GPU, your graphics card on your computer. It's quite interesting, actually, how graphics cards work. What they allow you to kind of parallelize all that's going on in, a, in an easy way. However, your graphics card, it, does, it can't, JavaScript can't then, it just doesn't know when something's not in use anymore. So it doesn't know to free up memory. So this actually right now has a memory leak. And if I kept on running this, we'd run out of memory on the computer. So what you need to do is you need to wrap all your TensorFlow code in something called TFTidy. Like this and like this, right? Uh-oh. 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 What have I done? Our oh, brackets errors. What have I done? There? I'm just going to keep on, yeah, there you go. So what this is going to do is it's just going to tell TensorFlow whenever this function ends, just delete whatever it is, just delete all those tensors automatically, right? And that's what tf.tidy is doing. And that's it. That's TensorFlow, right? That's what's going on when you're using the optimizer. Right, it's just changing. If it detects a variable in an equation, it's going to try and optimize it, given some data and loss function. All right? Let's go back to where we were before then. All right? Hopefully now you've got some, uh, some headspace there. So I am outside the... Uh, no, no, I think here it's, here it's okay because it's outside. You could do it inside, I suppose, but I don't think you need to because you don't need to free it up. This is kind of like, at this point, whatever there is, delete it. I don't think this is, maybe you're right, actually, maybe this is creating a separate tensor. Maybe. Maybe. Um, it's 
Now let's grab all of this. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this again. And then we're going to go into polynomials and you're going to do all that yourself. All right, here we go. Back here. A and C, they're variables now because we want TensorFlow to tune them, right? Variables, TensorFlow tunes variables. We create an optimizer. You've seen this before, right? We want to train this optimizer. We're going to go through a loop, number of iterations, tf.tidy, there it is again. We're going to get the x's and y's that we've already stored. And we call optimize dot minimize, and it's going to try and minimize whatever this value is here. Whatever this returns, it's going to try and minimize that whatever that is. So what do we get? So we've got the actual y's from the things. What are the predicted y's? And that's just calling get y. You know, that kind of a get y. A is equal to m x plus a. Y is equal to a x plus c. That's all this is doing. Given an array of x's. Give us an array of y's, okay? That's our predicted y's. Then now we've got our predicted y's and our actual y's. We can get our loss. And this is that like the kind of mean squared error. You saw it before. You take them away, all right? And you want this to be as lost, the, the least loss as possible, okay? And that's it. That's all it's doing. And it's going to change the values of A and C repeatedly, one for each one of those, and, draw, and then um, tune it. And so all I'm doing here is I'm getting the value of A and C out of it, and then that's actually used. You don't have to look at it, but if you look in draw line, uh, oh yeah. It's using get y, and that's using a and c to, that's changing the values of a and c just for the drawing function. And the last thing you need to know is tf.nextframe. It's running in the browser. So if you're running any kind of mathematical stuff in the browser, it's just going <clears> to <throat> take up all the CPU, and it's not going to be able to have a chance to draw anything. So what nextframe does, it just goes, nah, I've done something. Let yourself draw something on the page and let me do another iteration for the loop. So that's just, that's just for that. That's what next frame does, right? So if I now ran this uh, in the browser, yeah, kill that, refresh the page. There you go. So this is now that movement, that animation that you're seeing right now, that is TensorFlow learning. Each time it adjusts the value of A and C, it moves it. And these are the iterations that it's still running. All right. Remember mobile net? Mobile net was good, wasn't it? Yeah? Fun times of mobile net. Right. I know I zoomed into that, but hopefully that should be enough information to do the to do the next challenge for you. Okay, we have another type of hang on, let me get the uh, there's a file called polynomial.solution. Don't open it. Okay. A curve, there's another equation to describe a curved line. A line with a cur curved line. A curve. This is a curved line. That's just stupid. Um, do you remember this one then? Do you remember this? Y is equal to mx squared. I've got AX squared plus BX plus C. Slightly more complicated. But that's what describes a curve, right? Oh, shizzle. And so if, if looking on the screen, this is the same one. This is the polynomial version. So you can see it's drawing a line. It's drawing a curve. Oh, my God. 
strung a calf. But it's doing the same thing as before, is it's just you're giving it some data. You've, got, you've not just got A and C, you've got A, B and C. You've got three variables, A, B, C. Not just A and C, because you need the B as well. And so what I want you to do is I want you to start off, copy the code from 13.polynomial regression start, copy all of that into your main.js. Oh, there's a whole bunch of commented out code at the bottom there. <laughs> anyway. And here, flesh it out for polynomial. I put some clues in. Put some clues in. To do. If you see a to do, you're probably going to have to do something. To do. Tens I'm, my spelling is terrible. Tensor four. To do. Right? To do. If only life if only life was like this, if only when you're given work to do at work, people put to do's no, no, you've got to figure stuff out in life. I put to do's everywhere for you. There's just a couple of places for to do's. This is it. Give it a go. Um, oh, shizzle. This should be a to do. <laughs> okay, don't forget that one. There's a, there's a spare to do at the top. Line 30 is a to do also. But everything else here is, is, is enough to give you the curve. So you, don't, you don't have to do anything else, but just flesh the rest out. And you can see here, got a little bit more going on. All right, give that a go. Five minutes, 10 minutes. I have a vague memory that every time I give this, there's something I've forgotten on here, which I then pretend was a trick question to keep you all on your toes. So, we'll see. Maybe it is a trick question.
Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to turn myself into a, into a meme. There we Sorry, say that again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do you can do that way. You can you can do you can just play around with it, start with a low one and if you don't if it's not converging, uh, pick a bigger one. Go down. I mean it depends on itself, if you can start with it and make it like decay. Oh um no, because you're setting you're setting up the optimizer before you're running it through. You could probably do something clever with batching or something like that, but yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, normally, yeah, yeah. All right. You done it? Not yet? All right. Looks like people want to chill. So I'll just go through the answer. Let people go off do all that stuff. All right. Uh, okay. I'm going to go through the answer. Let you all go. We need a, we need a variable. A, B, C. So I'm just going to throw another one here. Let B equals 2. All right. My spelling is terrible. Um, so we need another way of calculating y. This is ax plus c. So we need a times. Oh man, I should. Plus b times. I want, I want to let prettier figure this out for me. Yes, boom. Um, ax squared plus bx plus c. TensorFlow needs another variable. A, B, C. Okay, just going to tune another value there. Um, this is the, this is probably the complex one. If you might have got stuck on this, in fact, I can't remember it. Ah. What was this? Yeah, so we need another way of of of, of calculating that kind of. This is, this is the get y but for in TensorFlow world, 
So how would you define that? So it's basically a multiplied x squared, right? Add, oh, add b multiply x, add c. Uh oh, add c. Kind of like TensorFlow it up. Then the kind of last thing we want to do is just store it so it will then render on the page. Does that work? I don't know. Let's see. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Is it working? I think it's working. That's how it works in. Did anybody get that? Yeah? People got it? Really? Yes! I taught people TensorFlow. That's it. There we go. If you want to go and learn a bit more, unfortunately I don't have it in a really good format, but um, the very next thing if I was teaching this, um, a longer version of this workshop, you would go to which repo? No, no, I can't. Do I jump straight into there? Maybe I jump straight into there. Oh, she's all. Uh, MNIST, uh, which is just the same thing, MNIST. It's going to be very tough. It might be tough for you to follow without like, seeing it. But if you did, the next thing I, was, I would show you is how to use um, MNIST as a data set where you can, uh, oh, I'll show you. So it's a data set where you can, uh, where you can, um, here it is. Eventually I'll, I'll finish my sentence. Um, shut up. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I don't need to do anything. Okay, this is the next example. Uh, if you don't want to learn it, the next, the next step, all, the next step, all, step. Hopefully it works. Doesn't look like it's working. Oh, it is working. Oh yeah. And uh, this basically is training up to recognize. You, 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 this is the next step. Is where you kind of pull a lot of that stuff together and learn how to, uh, oh my God, I am ruined right now. Um, recognize handwritten digits. So the MNIST data set is a famous data set of lots and lots of handwritten digits. Um, it's a very open data set, it's kind of a famous example. And what this would allow you to do after it has finished working is uh, it's, right now it's training up on, all, on, on tons and tons of images of handwritten digits, learning how to recognize handwritten digits and then uh, you can then uh, use it. I, I can make this faster. Wait, because I'm using, oh, I know what I'm doing. The create convolutional model, create dense model, create dense model. There we go, let's try that one more time. Train. There we go. I'm using a simpler training model. Okay, and then you can put in a number. And it's off the bottom of the screen. That's, how can I, wait, I know, I'll trick it into, how about that, hey? Okay. This is two. You can't see it, it's on the bottom, but it's two. It's two, right? It's two. And like this, this is not gonna be right because it gets one wrong all the time. And this is like, eight will be like here or something. There you go. So, no, no. Wait, if I did it like, if I did it from here, if I refreshed it now, yeah.
boom, two. It's actually telling you probability that it thinks it's two. So this is kind of the, very, the, the, the next step. And this actually does use more than one neuron. Um, and in the, in the example on GitHub, which is gone. Where's GitHub gone? Oh, here it is. This one's done a bit differently. Um, this completed and master. Uh, master and complete master started and completed is the end. Um, and you'll see here, there's, 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 I've, I've, I've built it with a couple of different ways of, 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 of building it. Uh, a couple of different algorithms, basically. So you can have a look at that, see how it works. It's, it's kind of very well documented. Um, the one you might want to the one uh, probably want to start off with dense. I don't know. It's going to be quite difficult for you to follow follow it from there. But um, if you did want to kind of flesh it out a little bit further, that, that, that's probably where I would start. Or like sign up for my book. Yeah? Did you sign up for my book? Well, we'll see. I'll check the numbers tonight. All right? I'll check it. I'll see. I'll see. Uh, sign up for the book because uh, I'm going to try and write all this stuff up because it's a little bit all over the place. I'm going to write it all up into a um, into a book, which I'll then release, and you can you can you can learn it a lot more. How do you sign up? You sign up on. Uh, ba -da -ba there. I need a hundred. Spoke at another conference recently, there was 1,400 in the crowd. I was like really excited. I thought I'd reached 100. I had like four sign-ups. So I was like really upset. I was like, you know? But hey, maybe, maybe I'll reach 100 now and I'll, and I'll, and I'll launch a Kickstarter. I made the, I made the cover. I made the cover. That's a good one, right? It's the robot. I made that. Well, I didn't make that. My, my, my designer friend made it. But um, I just want the book because it's a good cover. Look at it. It's cute. I made a little robot. All right? Sorry? Oh, oh yeah. I should do that. But it will draw every second. So like you'd be trying to move the mouse to the sign-up input field. And it'd be so slow. Oh yeah, moves away from me. <laughs> I only want the people who really want it, you see. That's it. Um, yeah. That's it, we're done. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Oh no, we're not done. We're not done, we're not done, we're not done, we're not done. We're not done. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to have to fill in a, a survey form. No one leave. Everybody stays. Okay. Give me two seconds. No one leaves. No one leaves. No one leaves. How do you quickly copy? I've forgotten. How do you copy? Three, two, three. Uh, we are in a uh, yes, conf Asia. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Uh, preview. Boom, boom, and then, huh? The title, forget about the title, don't worry, don't worry about the title, right? And then, um, where's the slack? Where's the slack? The slack, there's my slack. Boom, there you go. Right. Open the slack. Do it now. Once you click it, you see the, the sign-up form, the form. Were the objectives of the workshop clearly explained? No is one, yes is five. Did the workshop meet your expectations? Not well. One, very well. Five. It's weird, when I go through the form, I, I get so many people filling it out. When I just drop the link, no one, I have to go through the form. Was the workshop too easy, too, too complex, or just right? So one is too complex, five is too easy. 
I'm, I'm, I'm guessing where that one might, might, might land. Um, here's an interesting one. If you were asked to give a five minute presentation about TensorFlow.js, a five minute one, how confident are you that you could present this in your work or something? Uh, I only managed to go through two applications today, but anyway, did we go through too many or too few? Can you tell me one thing you liked about the workshop? It's the only goodness that I get. Um, but no, it's not only goodness. The most important thing is what, what, what should I change about the workshop? Like, what is it something I should change? I, I, you saw some of the things I changed this time around to kind of make it a little bit more engaging. What are some of the things I might change? Um, just anything else you want to tell me? Thank you, that's it. Yay.